What's up with it, man? It's the kid Push. Host of the No Fluff. You know the rest. Share the video with at least 5P if I didn't comment. Done. Let's go, let's go. Hey, yo, y'all don't get tired of looking at me on live. I know I'll be educating the shit out of niggas, but y'all don't get tired of looking at me. What's up with it, man? What y'all got going on? It's a nice Monday evening. Yesterday was the last day of the five-day challenge. I'm free. On to the next bag. On to the next impact. On to the next development. Yo, Glow, what it do, bro? What you got going on with it? What's the topic for the day, brother? It's a good question. Um, I know the topic for the day. Um, when, when is enough enough? Let me ask y'all that. My boy said, I'm at the airport, bro. I'm back on tour. Hey, yo, Glow, my um, my bro, Zoe, hit me up about you. So I told him um, I'm going to connect y'all. So make sure you're ready to uh, to at least come back to the A for that. But we got uh, we to gotta work on a couple things, too. I'm about to go down there. Uh, I'm about to go to Miami and fuck with Honcho. And then after that, I'm going to be working with you. So. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get all my homies a bag. That's, that's, the, that's the new lane. That's the new lane. I'm trying to get all my homies a bag. Like if if I can if I can if I can make money with all my homies like I I feel fulfilled. Yeah, you know I mean, I, if I can get money with all my homies, I feel fulfilled. So, that's my new thing. I'm about to go around and help my homies get a bag right now. So, that's my that's what I'm going to travel around and do right now cuz a lot of my homies don't don't know some of the plays that I know, so I'm about to put them on. That's easy. Enough is enough when it becomes enough. Hmm. All right. When is enough enough? Enough is enough when it affects your peace. Now, that's interesting. Enough is enough when it affects your peace. I don't know about that, yo. All right. So, look, this is what I mean. When is enough enough? Like, when are y'all going to, what has to happen for y'all to, you know, do something different? What has to happen to y'all? Let me ask y'all something. What what really has to happen to you for you to be like, everything that I'm doing is wrong? When is it? What has to happen? Because I think what's happening now is we are very, very, very comfortable. We are very comfortable. And for some reason, for some reason, no matter what happens, you got a beer been eating butt. I don't even know how these niggas start following me, bro. I don't even know how these niggas start following me. Straight weirdos, man. Somebody said, I need to change my solution ASAP. All right, so let me tell y'all something real quick. We're going to break it down like this. 10 differences between the poor, rich, and middle class. All right? 10 differences between the poor, rich, and middle class. Poor people think day to day. They want to have everything right now. You get a raise, you spend the money as soon as you get the raise. Right? Poor people pass over opportunities repeatedly. You feel me? You continue to pass over opportunities, even when it's given to you, even when you ask them. You ask for them. You pray for them. You even um, get bombarded with opportunities. You don't take them. Poor people 
live day to day? What do I got to make to get through the day? How much money do I have to get to work and get home from work? What, how, how much can I eat for today? Poor people think this way. Middle class people think month to month. What can I do to get through this month? I got enough money. I can have an apartment that I can afford this monthly. Um, what do I got to do to be able to pay for this per month? If I get this TV, I can afford it per month. If I get a car note like this, I can afford it per month. Middle class people think month to month. So rich people think year to year. How can I get through the year? What do I got to get to have this much on taxes for the year? Save this much. I, how, what I got to do to pay to qualify this type of credit, this uh, grant, this type of situation or classification uh, as far as tax is concerned. Rich people think year to year. Very rich people think decade to decade. Okay. So now poor people, they spend money. Middle class people, they save money. Rich people invest money. I'm going to steal you when I see you. Pop's still mad at you. I don't even know what that is, man. Steal me when you see me, though. Um, poor people spend money. Middle class people save money. Rich people invest money. Right? Real rich people invest everything. Real rich people invest everything. So why am I telling y'all this? Because a lot of y'all don't care about it, right? Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Why am I telling y'all about this? Because every decision that you make, you have to calculate. If you don't, then you're putting yourself automatically in that poor box. You're putting yourself automatically in that middle class box. And by the decisions that you make, you can put yourself in that rich box. Case in point, let's take my girlfriend, for instance, right? Let's say I got a girlfriend. I get my girl a Rolex, right? Listen to me, yo. I buy my girl a Rolex, this is going to be, it's going to cost me about maybe, it depends on which Rolex I get her. So it's going, it's going to cost my, me either between seven and $14,000, right? So me even buying my girl, the Rolex is going to be an investment because I'm already thinking about that. I'm already thinking about that. So I buy my girl, this Rolex and me being a person who feels like they're wealthy I think of every purchase that I buy in order to figure out which way can this pay me in the future. Everything that I try to buy, I buy it as an investment. Of course, there are going to be things that are not investments such as food, such as certain just leisure habits that I may have that I like to enjoy. And it's out of pure enjoyment. But even those things, I think of what is the long term investment in me purchasing it or buying it. So you have to choose the way that you want to calculate your life. So I buy my girl a Rolex. It's an investment, right? My na This nigga chasing wealth, so I, I got to block this nigga. My bad, y'all. Hold on. He violating. My bad. All right, cool. So now I buy my girl a Rolex. And then let's just say the first thing I'm going to do with this Rolex is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get it appraised. After I get the Rolex appraised, I'm going to go get it insured. And I'm going to pay on this insurance for as long as my girl has this watch. If anything were to happen to this watch, I will be able to get more than what I paid for the watch. Does that make sense? If anything happens to my girl's watch, I'm going to be able to get more than what my girl paid, um, more than what I paid for my girl's watch. So now I bought it as a gift, but it also is an investment, right? Somebody said, but isn't that her Rolex and her investment? No, it's going to be our, our investment, her Rolex, because if anything happens to her Rolex, we're going to get probably double the amount of that Rolex. Now, not only will she be able to replace the Rolex, but also I'll have some money on top that I can make an investment elsewhere. If y'all don't understand what I'm saying, I bought this watch right here for $25,000. When I got it appraised, they appraised it at $30,000. If something happens to this watch, 
they're going to give me thirty thousand dollars. Now I can replace the watch, and then also have I'll have an additional five thousand. Does that make sense? So that five thousand, I can take it and put it elsewhere. I can go and get my girl's watch with it the next time and get two, um, or I could just take the whole entire twenty five thousand and put it somewhere else. Um, and you got to understand that with time, a lot of these watches, they do appraise for higher in the future. So if this was the plain Jane Rolex, like I have a presidential Rolly 41 millimeter. It's actually, I bought it at 17 K it's now worth a little bit over $60,000. Now, if I were to sell it, if I were to go get it, um, uh, if I were to lose it now or something happens or if I have to sell it, I can sell it at 60 K that's an investment. So if I buy my girl a watch like that, that appraises over time, then that is literally me making investments with even when I buy my girl a gift. Somebody said you're not married. It's hers, but I'm with you. It doesn't matter if I'm married or not. I don't believe in your type of view. So me and my girl will have an understanding. Also, if I choose to turn my girl up financially, if I'm going to invest into her being a certain person who has certain assets, I'm going to take a percentage from my girl. Uh, so I'm gonna tell my, my girl is immediately going to sign a document with me saying that whatever I help her build, I'm going to get 10% cut out of everything that I'm teaching her. So a lot of y'all will see it like this. A lot of y'all will see it like this. Oh, that's your girl. She, you should let her get this, that, and the third, right? If it doesn't work out and she leaves with a skill that makes millions of dollars, I get 10% out of everything that she ever makes, regardless if we're together or not. So at the end of the day, she will have her own money, but also I will get a percentage of it because I indeed not only helped her, not only helped her develop it, build it. And, you know, nine times out of 10, I'm probably doing all of these things to make sure it makes money. I'm just using her likeness, which she doesn't understand how to do yet. And it's OK. So but basically, a lot of you guys will fumble that bag because you don't understand the long term investment it because you got to think about it like this. Poor people think day to day. Poor people spend money. Middle class people think month to month. Middle class people save money. Rich people think year to year. And rich people invest money. So I'm making an investment even into my partner, even when it's a watch, even when it's a car, even when it's a house, everything I'm calculating. I'm calculating it. You just don't see it that way because you don't calculate your moves. You think day to day or you're a middle class. You think month to month. If you're rich, you probably think year to year. If you're really rich, you think decade to decade. Some dude wants to trade me a Rolex for one of my cars. You think that would be a good idea? Me in particular? No, I would keep the Rolex. But now, so the reason why I'm speaking to you guys about this is because a majority of you guys, right? A majority of you guys, you really are consumed right now by what's going on in social media. Your attention span is very, very short. You're scrolling up. You're looking at videos. You're scrolling up. You're looking at dance videos, people playing pranks, things like that. And you might have been thinking you're going to do something else about 10 minutes ago. And then now I popped up on your live and now you're hearing a whole and different, entirely different like lecture right now. So a lot of this stuff, you guys aren't even ready to consume yet because you haven't made a decision to have the mindset of poor, middle class, or rich. If you're going to switch to the investment mindset, this is going to change your life in a dramatic way because now when you spend money, you are already thinking about what will happen in the future if I spend this. Most of you guys will go and spend money on a section and you don't care about your return on investment. You don't give a damn about that money coming back because you're thinking about day to day. I can afford this today. This is what you're thinking. I can afford this today. Just like when you guys get your tax return. You get a tax return, you might go buy a new car. I can afford this today. You might pay off all your bills. I can afford to pay all these bills at one time today. This is a this is a poor mindset. This is thinking day to day. Now, rich people, you're gonna think, if I spend this now, in the future, how will this repay me? How will my life look like if I spend this now? If I buy this house today, what will it look like next year? What does that look like for me? Will I be able to afford it next year? Next year, will it be worth more? Will I be able to then take money out of this property that I bought and then go buy more property with it and then use that property the same way I did with this property? That's an entirely different mindset than most people. Me, when I was poor, when I was passing over opportunities repeatedly, when I was trying to make it through the day, when I was living day to day, check to check, I thought the same exact way. I was just like you, waiting on my tax return. I was waiting on any 
any type of play, any type of lick because I had no type of long-term skills. I had no type of long-term investments. I didn't plan to invest. And anytime the opportunity to invest came about, I would not do it. I would run from it. I would literally do anything in my power to try to prove people or things or opportunities wrong by trying to do it myself when I have no background in finance. I have no background in business. I have no background in credit. I have no background in real estate. I have no background in commerce. I have no background in anything to do with financial literacy. Yet I'm going to tell everybody who has all the things that I want and they're traveling in all the places I want to be and they live in the type of houses I want to live in. I'm going to try to prove them wrong by trying to do it myself with no type of history of doing this. And this is like most of you guys do. So you end up being in the same boat next year and then two years go by and you're the same boat two years from then and then three years you're on the same boat. Nothing changed for me until I changed it. It just, it just is what it is. Like, honestly, and like I said, when I talk, a lot of times I already know that it's going to go over you guys here because if, if I don't say something like this, let me explain. If I don't say something like, if I tell you a strategy right now, you'll be a millionaire in 30 days. A lot of you guys don't care about what I'm about to say. It doesn't sound good enough to attract you. It sounds horrible to your ear. It's damaging to the psyche. It's sonically not connecting. Soon as I say, yo, if I say something like, you can do this, you can make a million dollars in 30 days with no credit, no money down. All you got to do is do this strategy. You guys will listen. You will tune in. You will pull your notepads out. If I say, yo, it's going to take about three, four, five, six years of you investing your time, your energy, and your focus into one thing, not pivoting. Even though it's not going to make a lot of money at first year one, you're going to build up your customers. You're going to build up your history, your business history. You're going to build up your customer list. You're going to build up your uh, business credit. And then after a couple years, your business credit, your tax returns, your bank statements will be in position for you to invest in that business again. But you'll be able to get more inventory. You'll be able to do more ads. You'll be able to get more exposure. And then you'll be able to make more money in probably about year four or five. When I say shit like that, when I say the truth to you, you be like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. I don't got five years. Look, I do it. I do this. I've been doing this for a long time. Y'all be like, nah, I don't got five years now. But where are you going? What are you doing that you don't have five years? Where are you going? What are you doing that you don't have five years? And I can almost promise y'all, I can almost guarantee y'all, it's 111 of y'all, maybe 10, maybe five out of all 111 within the next five years, we'll hit their financial stride. The reason being because of what I just listed to you guys. Poor, think day to day, they spend money. Middle class, think month to month, they save money. Rich, think year to year, they invest money. And because you never decided to invest your money and you decided to save it, how long will it take you? I want y'all to, ask, I want to ask my middle class folks, how long will it take for you to save a million dollars working your current job at the amount of hours that you work weekly? Somebody tell me if you're going for millionaire status, you would have already had to reverse engineer it and calculate it. So I want you guys to tell me how long it's going to take you to save a million dollars working your current salary and the amount of hours that you're working. How long will it take you to make millions of dollars? In your current career, with your current expenses, with your current expenses, your current expenses are your what you got to pay for your car notes, what you got to pay for your house or your mortgage or your rent, what you got to pay for all of these things. How long will it take? In reality, I'm telling y'all, I'm only telling y'all this because it's unavoidable. Some of people, look, some people really think, look, look, I, I really got to, you got to debunk all of the myths. Some people think that I really have to sell to you guys. Um, my courses are mentorship. I love to sell courses. I love to teach people and sell um, mentorships and make impact. I love masterminds and I love getting paid for, for teaching people how to level up. But do I have to do it? No, I don't have to. And when I'm teaching, some people mistake the fact that I do have a business in coaching. I do have a business with courses that y'all think that when I'm giving y'all actual advice that you can take outside of me, y'all think that I'm trying to sell to y'all. I want y'all to know this. Listen, you need to invest no matter if it's with me, 
If it's with this guy, if it's with that woman, if it's with this organization, you're going to have to invest in someone teaching you something new. How many guys, how many times have y'all went to sleep, had a dream and woke up and knew how to make a million dollars? How many times you went to sleep, had a dream, woke up and said, ah, I know how to do a new skill. Here we go. I know how to make money a new way. It doesn't happen. You will never come to a eureka moment. I'm telling you right now, just as a friend, just as somebody who y'all might look up to, just as somebody y'all might look up to, listen, I'm telling you, you're not going to have a eureka moment where you say, ah, wow, I just figured it out, guys. I know how to make a million dollars now. It's not going to happen. You need to find someone who can teach you the steps to even climb from A to B to C. You got to get somebody to teach you how to go where they're coming back from. You got to find somebody coming back from where you're trying to go. It might not be me. For most of y'all, it's not me. I'm going to be real. For most of y'all, it's not me. I'm not the one who, who y'all respect enough to even listen to. I'm not even the one y'all respect enough to even listen to. So it's not even me. For most of y'all, it's somebody else. But you're going to have to find someone else, some type of organization, some type of facility, some type of person who can pour into you and teach you who you respect, who can give you the tough messaging that lets you know that you need to start building your personal brand. You need to start building your business brand. You need to start building your relationships. You need to start really utilizing those contacts in your phone. You need to start really utilizing those emails in your phone. You really need to start utilizing all of these people on your Instagram and on your TikTok and on your Facebook and all of these things. You really have to start utilizing those things. If you don't, you're never going to get over the hump. You are constantly going to be swimming. And every time you get your head above water, somebody going to step right on top of your head and you're going to go right back underwater. Every single time that you feel your, your arm going up out the water and you got your head up, you're going to go right back down every time. No matter how much you try to save, you're trying to save your way. You have to invest. I'm not saying you even have to be an entrepreneur, but even if you keep your nine to five, you're going to have to invest in like stocks and like, some type of business into some type of commercial real estate, some type of real estate, even that you can build equity in something that at some point in time that you can even pull some equity out and then go invest somewhere else to have more passive cash flow, more than what you're working for actively at your nine to five. You cannot save your way to wealth. You cannot, you cannot, you can't spend your way to wealth either. So think it poor people think day to day, they spend money. Middle class thing month to month. Y'all save money. Rich people, you think year to year or decade to decade and you invest everything. I told you, even down to the jewelry. If I if someone steals this necklace right here, I'ma get like 70 racks for this piece and this necklace. But get this one right here, I'ma get like 15,000 for this one right here. This ring right here, I'ma get 10,000 if somebody steal this. If somebody steal my rollie, I'ma get 30,000. So I have insurance on it. I've been paying into the insurance. That's a good investment for me because if I if something were to happen, I lose it, it gets stolen, somebody burglarizes my home, my car, my store, I got to do a claim, I will be compensated for it. Therefore, the investment was great. Same thing with my house. My house costs $2.5 million. If my house were to burn down, I will get more than 2.5 million because it's worth more than that. I'm going to get whatever my house is worth. If I only put down 400,000, I want y'all to think about this. If I only put down 400K, I bought my house for 2.5. It's now worth 3.1. They're going to give me $3.1 million. I'm going to pay my loan off that I owe and I will keep the rest of that money. With that extra money, I can do a lot of things. I can continue to invest into real estate. I can go get my house rebuilt. I can go do whatever I want. I keep the land though. Even if they pay me for the house to get it built back up, I keep the land. I got an acre and a half of land that I can say, okay, the house burnt down. I just got paid out for my crib. I'm going to build three more houses on the same exact real I got an acre and a half. I'm going to build three cribs. Because I got the cash to do so and the credit to do so. I'm invested in my credit every day. I look at my credit score every day. If something new hits, a hard inquiry hits, anything, I'm going to see it. I want to make sure my credit stays in position for me to make moves. 
when I want to build these cribs, I will have the, the history, the credit history to say that I'm able to afford this, that I'm going to pay on time. So please let me build these three cribs on my acres there. I'm going to go ahead and get me a permit with the city. And after the permit is cleared, I'm going to go get the builders to come and build this. And I don't even have to pay them until they're done with the work. They're going to get all of the equipment. They're going to go get all of this material before I even pay them. They're going, I'm a, they're going to build my cribs. I'm going to get three cribs built on the acre. It was a good investment. I wasn't thinking of saving. I wasn't thinking of spending. I was thinking of investing. That's why I got the crib. And the whole entire time I had this crib, it had been being rented out. The whole entire time. That's how you got to think. You have to switch. You have to switch. A lot of us have, we learned so much bullshit over our lives, man. I'm 33. I'm about to be 34 this year. We learned so much bullshit all of our life that it's stuck. So y'all know when they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. A lot of y'all have learned so much false information that when I'm speaking facts to you, you literally cannot hear it. You cannot hear me. You go deaf. You're, I'm talking to on a different frequency. Y'all ever try to listen to a radio station and the frequency is off and you hear the static? If I'm talking to you and you're not on the right frequency, you will not be able to receive my message. So just like I just said, I'm probably not the mentor for most of y'all. So when I'm telling y'all to invest in type of mentorship or into some type of uh, community or into some type of university or something like that, I'm not saying me. You don't got to invest in me. You know, or, or invest in yourself through me. You can invest in yourself through someone else, through somebody else's program, but you can't, you cannot avoid doing it though, because you don't have the information gap closed. You don't have the IG. Shout out to my brother Marcus Roser. You don't have the information gap to, you don't have the information to close that gap. You have to. You will not teach yourself new shit. Right. You will not teach yourself new shit. It's impossible. And you can't do it off Google and YouTube because you don't even know what to Google. That's my thing. Like y'all got to really understand me when I tell you all this. Listen, there are a lot of people that believe they can Google and YouTube what people like myself do, what millionaires do, what people who are making lots of income do. Y'all firmly believe that you can Google and YouTube how to become successful. But the reason why you cannot is because you don't even know what to Google. You don't even know what to Google. So there are things that we know that we don't know. Like someone who doesn't know real estate, they've heard of real estate, right? So they'll say, I know that I'm not familiar with real estate. But if you don't know what you don't know, there are unknown unknowns. There's are, there are things out there that you don't even know that you don't know. You, do y'all you understand what I'm trying to say? It's an unknown unknown. You have no idea what you should be looking for, what you need to Google. So if for those people who think they can go to Google University and become some type of wealthy person, you don't even know what to Google. You don't even know what to look up. So there are people who heard of real estate. Okay. Have you heard of private equity? Have you heard of fintech investing? Seller financing. Have you heard of this to buy a business? You don't even know what to know. You don't. So how could you possibly Google your way to wealth? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can do that business. All I got to do is Google it. You don't even know what to Google. So what I need y'all to understand is this. Poor people think day to day. Middle class people think month to month. Rich people think decade to decade. Poor people spend money. Middle class people save money. Rich people invest money. Think about what the fuck you want to be. If you continue down the path that you are going, your future does not look bright. Your future looks dark. I need you to look at your parents. I need you to look at your grandparents. I need you to look at your uncles and your aunts. I need you to look at your closest friends to you. Nine times out of 10, you will not make 10% more income than the people that are around you. You probably will make less because you are waiting on them to level up before you level up. Nine times out of 10, you will not make 10% more than the people that are around you. There's a law of averages. 
You are the average of the six most people you hang with the most. You're the average. So don't think that you're going to be some type of anomaly in your circle. You got to go to another circle where you're the dumbest in the room. You got to go to the uh, you got to go to another circle where they are going to make you feel like an idiot. It's going to be uncomfortable. You will not know what the fuck is going on. You will not only not know what's going on, you will be embarrassed because you don't know what's going on. But that's okay because comfortability is your enemy. You need to be uncomfortable to grow and change. You have to be uncomfortable. If you mad comfortable around your folks and shit, you probably in the wrong circle. You probably the leader of your circle. And if you're the leader of your circle, look at your bank account. Nine times out of 10, your whole circle bank account is emptier than your shit. Your whole circle bank account is, is less than your. If you're the leader of your circle and people ask you on advice where to hang out, where to go. When y'all go out of town, they're like, yo, Mitch, where we going? What, what, what restaurant are we going to? What hotel are we staying at? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where are we going to go tonight? If that's your friend group and they always try to ask you. Then nine times out of 10, your bank account is higher than everybody that you hang in with. So this means that you need to do a change. You need a disruption. You need a disruption of the butterfly effect. You need to disrupt the timeline. You need to change the pivot, your destiny. You need to make a different move. If you think you will come up with the folks that you came up with and you are not Drake and you are not 40 in future and y'all rapping in the studio day and night. Nine times out of 10, 10 times out of nine, you will die broke. You will die broke. That doesn't mean that you won't have a happy life. That doesn't mean that you won't have a good family. That doesn't mean that you will be starving, but you will die broke. Because you never changed or disrupted the pattern. We, there are statistics for a reason. The reason there are statistics is because so many people statistically are followers. And they look at their circle and they're not even motivated, inspired. And they stay in their fucking circle. You're not motivated by your circle. You're not inspired by your circle. You, do, you wouldn't invest your money with your circle. You wouldn't let your circle use your credit. You wouldn't let your circle do your taxes and you still choose to hang around them. That means that you are choosing your fate and your fate looks exactly like your parents and your grandparents and your cousins and your uncles and your aunts and your best friend and your next door neighbors and your coworkers. Your future look just like that. If anyone needs help or assistance with entrepreneurship in the future of any kind, I do offer mentorship. I am very well versed in the rental car space, the Airbnb space, the credit repair space, the digital product space, and even social media and content space. If you would like help with those things and only if you would like help with those things, DM me the word mentorship. If you think that I'm a good mentor for you, if you think that I'm a good fit for you, then no matter what my price may be, that price shouldn't stop you from getting to where you want to go. And that's only for if you want me to be your mentor, because I don't want you to be my mentee. I'm not selling it to you. All I'm doing is letting you know that I have it available. If you want to tap in about it, shoot me a DM with the word mentorship and I got you. But other than that, regardless if you ever invest with me or anybody that knows me, always invest in yourself through someone who you look up to. You buy into the lifestyle of the people who you take advice from. So if you take an advice from your parents, you buying into their lifestyle. If you take advice from your coworker, you're buying into their lifestyle. If you take advice from your best friend, Sharon, you're buying into her lifestyle. So if she one of them boppers who's flying all around the city and she's doing all that wild shit and you actually ask that person for advice in any form or fashion, know that that's going to be the top results that you'll ever get. Choose wisely. 
And that's all I'm going to say. Much love. Happy Monday. Good luck through y'all work week. Everybody, look. Everybody that's going to work at a nine to five, have fun at work tomorrow. Everybody that's an entrepreneur who's going out here to test the time to see if you can go against the statistics, go against the what everybody say that you can't be. Have let's go, let's go get them at work tomorrow. Let's have fun. See y'all, man. Peace in the Middle East. You know the vibes.